All right. Hello. Um, my name is Hank Fisher. Uh, I'm an engineer on uh, the Met Plus team. Uh, we're going to talk today about a whole bunch of things. We have some somewhat of an ambitious um, presentation today, but uh, we're going to talk about Met Plus, uh, Amazon Web Services, and NOAA's big data project. And we're going to try and go start to finish um, creating um, an EC2 instance from a machine image uh, that has NOAA's big data project data on it and um, create some Met Plus scripts. So let's get going. Um, and this presentation will be available. Um, I will probably go through it fairly quickly. Um, so hopefully you can refer to it later. Um, but uh, this is, uh, here's our start. So I'll do a few demo, um, a few brief definitions. Amazon Web Services is cloud-based, obviously um, Amazon's version. There are others, um, but we mainly use Amazon. Um, an AMI is a machine image, so it's an EC2 instance. We have great set up um, just the way we like it and um, have then snapshotted that so other people can grab it and use it. Um, so if you are, if you have an Amazon login, either personal or your um, workspace, you should be able to find this um, machine image. So let's go through how you would do um, a search. So first of all, you're going to log into the Amazon web space um, and then services. And if you click on the EC2, it will bring up um, this page that I was just on. You can see I have a lot of instances running because all of those are um, your tutorial ones. But if you scroll down on this left side, you will see something called AMIs. And that's where you want to click on to go search. So um, you want to make sure your region is either US East 1 or Northern Virginia. I will show you where to do that. So this is over here. Um, so right now, our machine image is only available in North. It's, it'll say either Northern Virginia or US East 1. Um, so Hopefully you have uh, your space in the, one of those or can switch to it. Um, and then, uh, so that's in the drop down menu. And then what we want to do is click on the same eye, which it did. You want to look for public images and then you want to do a search. So there's a lot of public images out there. Um, if you do a search on Met Plus, it should bring up right now, it should bring up four different tutorials, or sorry, four different machine images. Um, there's the 4.0, um, just Met Plus coordinated release, EC2 instance, or um, AMI, one of the tutorial, which has tutorial data. Um, we have the new 4.1, and then the new 4.1 tutorial. So um, that's how you go find, find the AMI. What do you do once you find the AMI? So, um, and I attached a few images um, to the presentation so you can kind of see exactly what I'm doing, even though I'm doing it now. So let's click on this Met Plus tutorial AMI. And um, you can see, once I bring that up, I've got this great orange button that says launch instance from AMI. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that and we can start seeing some of the things we choose. Again, I'm going through this fairly fast. Um, there should be some more, uh, there are some more detailed explanations in the presentation, or you can refer to the um, recording after this, but um, Amazon does a great job of highlighting um, the free tier eligible. So if you're on your personal account and you wanna do free tier things, we have set up this AMI so that it is um, compatible with free tier type of um, processors and data space. So there are a lot of different um, processors you can choose, um, but everything should work with this T2 micro, which is free tier eligible. Um, if you're in a hurry, you can essentially hit review and launch at this point. 
I'm going to go through quickly some of the other configurations you can use um, that you can modify. So uh, instance details, I almost never change things here. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, and we'll just skip on to the storage. Storage, um, for the free tier, you are um, able to go all the way up to 30 gigabytes. So that's what we did. We, um, we sort of set a default of 30 gigabytes that should fit in the, um, the free tier space. And you can, if you want, you know, data space isn't too expensive. If you can, you can put up more. If you, you know, if you have your um, no account or anywhere else that uh, you're, somebody else is uh, paying for, you can um, add more gigabytes. It'll cost a little bit, but um, it's not too bad. We haven't been we haven't been charged too much. Um, all right, so then let's get to the tags. I almost always add a tag, and the, and the tag is um, name. So this I'll show you where this name pops up. Um, but um, it's always good to add a name tag because if you have a variety of users using your same Amazon web space, you're going to start getting confused as which is which. So let's just do, see that I've already prepped some of this, but um, we're going to give it that name and then go on to the next configuration. Again, I rarely change anything here. Um, for this tutorial stuff. Um, this one here, which is um, the, you can limit your um, IP range um, that are allowed to log into your particular EC2 instance. I highly recommend you do this. Um, you can research a AWS documentation. This is good for security purposes to limit this to either a block or maybe even a single IP from the machine you're using. So this is good. We don't do this here um, because um, there's not much you can do from our, our EC2 instances to get in trouble. Um, so then we're gonna go to review and launch. Um, we can see the stuff we did um, and then just hit launch. Um, this is another thing I'm not gonna go over in too much in detail, but every time you launch uh, an EC2 instance, it automatically creates an admin account for you so that you can log in and have pseudo privileges. Um, you will need to set up existing key pairs to do that, um, which is a little bit out of the depth of this particular um, presentation. Um, but you know the, the documentation for Amazon is good um, for doing this. So we're going to launch an instance. This went pretty quickly this morning. Um, so hopefully it'll go pretty quickly now. So your instances are launching. I can click on this, um, which is probably the easiest way to go to it. And you can see that it's pending. Um, I'll talk a little bit about um, some other things while that is pending. Um, let's see if I can. That's interesting, but I don't, oh, there we go. So you can see I have a lot of, we, we have about 30 or 40 um, EC2 instances running for your tutorial. Um, Tina Kalb is testing something right now. And then ours should be at the bottom, um, which is way down here. It says it's running, which is great. Let me check my uh, presentation, see uh, where I am in this. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've captured some screenshots, um, sort of going through exactly what I'm doing. So we now have um, an EC2 instance running and let's, same thing, click on this instance ID and it'll bring up um, some information about this particular instance. The key part that we are looking for is um, this public IPv4 address. So this is how you get into um, your EC2 instance. Copy that and we'll switch to this. Um, let's do this. Um, Let's 
Yeah, I forgot it used to be correct. Um, so, um, the EC2 user um, is automatically set up in the tutorial AMI. Um, so, you will have this um, automatically available, which may or may not be what you want because um, it's a password that's um, easily guessed <laughs> and um, is accessible from anywhere. So, you know, one of the things you can do, if you, if you just want the tutorial, you want to get going, you want to try out some data, um, um, creating an EC2 instance from the tutorial AMI is a good idea because you'll have data there. It's easy to get in. It's easy to get started. Um, and uh, it's, it's good to use. But if you're going to do any sort of production or you have some security issues, um, launch an instance from the MET Plus 4.1 um, without the tutorial label. Um, because the EC2 user will not be available on that one. Um, there won't be any data, but it's pretty easy to get data. So right now, if you can see, this is, we are in uh, my, uh, this new EC2 um, instance for the tutorial. So let me do one thing, since I can't ever remember exactly what that, uh, I am going to, I want to copy. Hank, could you um, do do us a favor and hit the hide? You, you can just hit hide and it'll, there you go. No, no, it won't be in your way. Thanks. I didn't know you guys could see that too. My bad. <laughs> um, so here is, oops. so I've, I've set up some scripts um, for today's tutorial. Um, this is one way to get data in. Um, it's it's pretty easy just to copy things on your local machine into EC2 instance um, and uh, you know use your own data. Uh, so here we are in the EC2 instance, um, which is going pretty fast. So this is good. I'm I'm well ahead of schedule, which is uh, could be good. Could be bad. Um, so let's take a look at, so that's what I, um, I, I showed you how to find your IP address um, from that new EC, EC2 instance that you just launched. Um, it's pretty easy to SSH into it. Um, sorry, most of my instructions are Linux based. Um, Windows should work the same way if you have PuTTY or Mobile X term, um, it, it kind of works the same way. Uh, some more screenshots. All right, so um, that went pretty well. So we have a new EC2 instance um, that is launched from the, the MET Plus 4.1 tutorial uh, AMI. Um, and now we're going to take a look at how to get your own data on it and how to see the data that is already on it. So this... Uh -huh. Before you go any further, um, are there any quick questions that anybody oh, yeah. has? Go ahead, Jack. Yeah, I was just curious. That step you just did there, then that was sending up config, a config file versus data. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yep. That's so. Yeah. The the SCP that I did. Um, yeah. So these I've got I've got four. Met plus config files that I have um, pre-generated that we'll go through now um, and send it up there. Uh, you know, copy this to the EC2 instance so that I can I can run some Met plus scripts. Okay, so setting up like paths and things like that, perhaps. Exactly, and I, I'll, I'll I'll show you what's in them in just a second. But yes, that's that's right. Setting up paths um, and um, setting up a system. Uh, yeah, one a couple of the the met tools. So. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so here is what you have. Look, so um, if if you've been using the cloud-based 
tutorial, um, you already know where everything is. This is um, also sort of where, you know, if you're using a no machine or one of your own, um, you already have this net plus data um, installed. Um, so that's where your the, the current tutorial data that we've been using is. That is still there. Um, but for this 4.1 release, we have added something else, which is the big data project. Um, hopefully that's uh, the, the term we want to use for this. But so NOAA's has this project where they're um, making available a ton of data. Um, this is currently free to um, connect to and use um, for any Amazon Web EC2 instance. Um, I don't know if that'll be permanent, um, but for now we might as well take advantage of it. So I have loaded um, these three different data sets. You can, see if I get the right, uh, the listing of all possible data sets um, is in this um, URL. Um, and let's see, I don't, I think I put that, uh, I probably need to add that to the presentation, um, but hopefully you can see this here. It's pretty easy to search on in Google, um, but you can scroll down and see all of these. You've got Nextrad, you've got OFS, um, there's a whole ton of directories and data sets that you can add on your own, which I will now show you how to do. Um, and you know, there's a lot of data, data available if you need it. So, um, right, so I these are the three, these are the, let's see, I've added five directories um, so that we can use some of the data. Some of this um, I've added for um, some other soon future projects that are coming up pretty soon, um, but it's just a good sample of, of uh, things you can see. So let's see. Um, so those are the, is that a question? Sorry, I don't have my. Oh, thanks, Tara. Um, so there's the preloaded one. Let's let's grab our own data. Um, it's this is going to seem fairly rudimentary to everybody who, um, oops, uh, who has done this before. Um, let's see, I guess I can't copy and paste from there. Um, let's try this. That's why that's not working. Um, but it really is that easy to go grab some data. Um, you can just use a simple wget. And let's see, I think I had one more thing in the presentation. I wanted to grab something else. Um, yeah. what I want. Sorry, I had this all planned out, of course, you know, going live. Um, I will start this download, but I won't finish it because it's fairly large. Um, but it's as easy as doing a wget. So if you have data somewhere else, um, you can obviously get all of our Met Plus data. That's that's on a, a an exposed website, um, free to grab anytime. I'm downloading the S2S data um, right now, um, and I'm going to cancel that because um, I think I already have this on here. So. The S2S data is also preloaded, or it's not. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, if you wanted to get the S2S data and load it in here, um, that would be, you can just wget that targz file um, and um, on, off you go. And 
you know, any, any machine, any website that you've got the exposed data um, is available to just do a WGET. I know that it, it sounds kind of easy, but it, it really is that easy. All right, so um, there's some examples for that. Let's go see if we can add a new um, big data project data set. So I've listed the, um, uh, which is good, Tar put that in the link, but uh, um, we've got the um, website there, which is great. Um, and let's go see. Um, so I'm going to do one thing, um, which, so in order to hear, hear the steps to add um, a new data set, first let's make a directory. Um, and then um, what I need to do now is switch to um, an admin user so that I can mount a new drive. Let's do this. I'm going to go back and get my IP. And this is, again, a little bit out of the realms of um, this current one, but um, these are the keys that we set up to access the um, admin user. I'm just going to type my uh, IP in there, and it automatically goes in without my um, password because I've set the keys up. So do I make that a little bit bigger. So in your Etsy FS tab, these are the lines that we've used to um, create to um, mount one of the big data project data sets. Um, into the CC2 instance. So if you want to add another one, we can edit this. We can copy that. Ah, one thing I forgot. So this NOAA CFS PDS um, is the AWS tag that tells it um, um, that, you know, tells where the, where the data set is. What we want to do is find OFS. So, there's, my, there's my OFS. We click on the OFS, gives you some documentation, um, gives you some other things. Here is the tag I'm looking for. So we're going to copy that. You're going to say, I want to add that particular data set. You're going to point out directory that um, we just created so that we can mount that. We're going to save this file. The, the FAV mount. Um, Essentially, just goes through all of the things in the FS tab and remounts them and makes sure they're okay. So, this last line um, and all of like these instructions are right here. So, make the directory pseudo mount that. Um, so, it should be it, it should be easy to go through. So, let's go take a look. So we have OFS. And there are all of your directories from the big data projects um, for the OFS data. Um, I don't know what any of this is. Um, so um, hopefully you do if you want to use it. Um, okay, so um, I'm actually talking pretty fast and um, doing pretty well on time. That is sort of the next, um, the second of the three sections that I had to talk about. Are there any questions about data, getting data in and out of your EC2 instance or um, big data project data or anything else? Go ahead. 
Yeah, Hank, I was just curious. Um, I had a question there in the chat about is that live data or is that you know mounting the preloaded data? So um, the the big data project directories or something. Um, so yes. Yeah, so this, as far as I know, this is live data. So if you can see our date stamp for this OFS that we just added has got a 3-29-2022, um, March 29th um, timestamp. So the big data project is, I will um, go out on a limb and say definitely live. I don't think all of these data sets are live, but many of them are. Um, okay. I was just curious yeah. if that was a live link to the actual yeah. bucket. Yeah, so exactly. So once you mount this, once you mount this directory, it's a live link to the bucket. Okay. My other question was back to your IP where you limit ranges. I'm thinking, you know, say I set one of these up and want to share it with some people to try it out. Yes. And get that far. It, yeah. So, that, you know. Yeah. So that's it. You know, there's you can you can kind of make it open to. There's a lot of flexibility in um, creating those IP blocks um, to limit your, you know, sort of limit your, your security issues. You can make it open to everybody, um, but you can add single IPs, like you can add several different IPs one at a time. You can add a whole range um, if there's, you know, if there's a several people at, at one company that you want to um, try out, or you know, your own workplace, you can you can set up a whole block of IPs fairly easily with one one entry. Um, but yeah, there's 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 a variety of ways to do it. It it, it can take a little bit of time to get it right, um, but um, it is is pretty powerful. So. Does that answer your question, Jack? Yeah, I think so. I guess the, you know, the little nuances. So everybody that uses that, if, it, if you leave it wide open, would come in as that EC2 user, which is good because that probably enables all the functionality. But I was yep. thinking about like, you know, test user one, test user two, and would that be a better way to go? But yeah, I mean, you, you can definitely do that, all, all of that. I mean, you know, one thing, one thing I've learned about um, doing AWS cloud work is that you kind of have to be your own sysadmin as well as your own engineer as well as your own scientist so it's you know you you learn some of these things they're not too difficult but yes you can you can add up different users with different passwords um that's that's not a bad way to go um and not too difficult um or you can limit ip addresses to the same yeah i mean it i i think that um if you have a few different users that you want to use the same EC2 instance, having different usernames is the right way to go. Otherwise, they'll probably conflict with each other. Um, so, you know, if you just want to have one quick way to do it, the EC2 user is a good way to go. But um, if you want to have different people, you know, trying it out at the same time, definitely different usernames is the way to go. Thanks. Yep, no problem. Uh, any other questions? Uh, and yeah, I, I mean, so I set up these, um, the new 4.1 EC2 instances yesterday morning. Um, if you're having trouble, just, you know, send me an email and I can certainly help, uh, after this tutorial. So, okay. So we have, um, we've got. A bunch of data that we can use. Um, what do we do with this? So now we're now we're sort of backtracking in the Met Plus tutorial, and I am starting from some basics. We'll, we'll we'll try and start from some basics. I will show you how my brain works when I'm trying to when I'm starting to investigate data, um, and sort of how to get going um, with Met Plus in general. I will now give you a Big caveat, um, I started my career as an engineer. I then was um, a fairly terrible scientist for about five years and then went back to engineering for the last 20. So any science statements 
that I make from now on should be treated with some skepticism, but um, we'll do it anyway. All right, so this is this is kind of the first thing I do um, is let's go. We're gonna we're gonna work on the CFS data sets, um, and this is exactly what John O'Pats and I did when we started um, creating this sort of scenario. Is we see the end of the directory and we start looking at what's there. Um, let's go look at I don't know. Let's go look at the latest one um, and see. So lots of these will make more sense to everybody else, um, but it looks like there's um, a couple different scenarios. Um, let's go look at, um, you know, from the zero Z runs. Um, let's go, let's just keep going into these directories until we find some files. So great, we found some files, what's in them? Um, your 4.1, Met plus and Met plus tutorial now has WGRID2 loaded on it. Um, the 4.0 does not, um, but this one does. So we can take a look and just see what are in each one of these files. Um, it, this is, it, you, can, you can also read the documentation. Um, obviously the documentation is gonna give you a head start on what files have what. Um, but I also like to just sort of see, you know, exactly what's in there. Um, we looked at a few of these files and um, we decided that we were going to, this one, because John read the documentation, I certainly wouldn't, um, we can take a look at what's in this particular file. And I think we were, we were interested in temperature. Um, uh, actually, I think I chose the wrong file again, but for a simple MET plus use case, temperature is a great way to get started. So we just kind of took a look at what the files are there, um, did Bevy Grid, looked at what variables are there. So now let's go, let's go try and start creating some MET plus uh, comp files. So uh, step one, um, I borrowed this from one of the Met Plus tutorials um, talking about time looping um, and using the example process list. So this is just a great way to run, to figure out how to get your naming template, which is this super confusing thing right here. Um, into a state where you're actually grabbing files. Um, so I did loop by init um, because uh, I think the, the data that we're grabbing isn't exactly um, a great representation of either initialization time or valid time, but I chose init so that we could just loop through the files. Um, gave it a time format, um, I wanna grab four months worth of data um, or four, four monthly files worth of data. Um, I did an increment of one month so that it loops through one, two, three, four. Um, here's our input directory. Um, so the CFS that we just looked at. And then here is my example template. So the monthly GRIB files, um, and this isn't, this will, this will grab files just to know that I can name them correctly. It isn't exactly the files that I want to grab, um, but we will. I will show you step two where I sort of refine that process and start grabbing files that we want to run series analysis. But anyway, there we're gonna. This init right here is gonna loop through the months because we had monthly grib 0102304. We want the IPVF files which are also labeled in a certain way. Let me see if I can flip through, let's see. So here's my, oh, that is also a good thing. So right now I am admin and I think I wanna be doing this as EC2 user. So I'm gonna switch really quick, but let's 
go. So we can see kind of what we're doing. So when I say months of grid four, three, two, one, uh, I'm sort of assigning those as months just so I can see what we have. So let's go do this as the EC2 user. Um, and then my system.conf has um, just a couple things in it. Um, we've got this net plus tutorial dir, which is automatically set up in your environment as the EC2 user so that we make it easy for the tutorial. Um, I'm gonna, this is gonna create a directory called output for me. Um, here's my input base, so that's, that's the directory we start everything from, and then the install there, which is Optimet. Um, and essentially, those are the only three things that I need in my system configuration. Um, so let's just run step one and see what we have. Um, so there's there's a variety of ways to um, reference your comp files. Um, I do the dash C for both system, and then oh, actually I didn't do the step one dot com, but we'll see if that works. Um, this for some reason has taken more time than I expected, um, but it will run eventually. I am hoping. George, um, while I'm waiting for this, oh good. So um, obviously I don't need to do dash C for both of those. Is that, can I just um, type in run met plus with two different config files without the dash C these days, or do I still need a dash C? Uh, yes, the dash C argument is no longer needed anymore. Okay, so I can I can just got it. So you can just you can just put a series of comp files in there and, and it'll go. Yeah, it it doesn't hurt to include it, but it's not required anymore. Okay, that's good because I did one of each, which is kind of silly, but um, all right. So this is it. This is this is how I get started running Net Plus scripts. This isn't exactly what I wanted to have happen, um, and is somewhat useful, but not super useful. But I can tell that I am, that my um, template for finding the files is doing the right thing because it is finding files. So that is a great start. Um, and now I can use that to go on to some slightly more challenging things. Let's go look at step two. What I want to do with step two is um, run series analysis on some of those files that we found in that directory. Um, so what I did was essentially just grab this same information from um, that step one process. So I, you know, I set it up, I, I found the files I wanted. Um, so I'm like, let's go with that. I added it to go from one to seven. So um, I'm grabbing a few more files. Um, and I, for series analysis, I need to start adding a few more variables. So, yep, added the, the temperature variable. Let's see, let me see one thing. Yep, so we are on the slide, so you can refer to that later. Um, but temperature, um, I found, I saw that in the grid file, so I know that's the right way to refer to that. Um, Z2 is um, referring to two meter temperature. So if I go back to um, one of those files, I don't think I need to do that right now, but if I do a WGRIB2, um, you can see that there's temperature on a variety of different levels, one of which is two meter. So I know that I can request the Z2 level um, for two meter temperature and, and I'll get some, get some data out. Z0 is surface. I think that file also creates surface, so I could do it on that as well. Um, 
here is where I will hopefully press John Opat into talking a little bit um, if he's on if he's on the call. But um, John, maybe you could say um, why we are requesting output stats, why we're requesting these three output stats, and then maybe just a couple sentences about this new feature um, um, in MET 4.1 that we're, that we're using to speed things up. Sure. Um, so, uh, as, as is mentioned, we're, we're requesting a few things. So, total is always a great um, variable to ask for at the end because it gives you a total number of responses. Um, so, in this case, if you're running seven files, you'd expect your total across the entire area to be seven. If a file does not meet um, whatever thresholds uh, you've set up or that you've expected uh, MET to have the standard or um, the standard thresholding. Um, so let's say you set in seven variables, but your threshold is at 1.0 in terms of all the grid points have to be available, but one of your models or one of your inputs that's in there does not have a grid, uh, does not have a grid point value um, for one of those runs. So the entire thing is thrown out because it doesn't meet the 1.0 threshold you've set up. Then for that one, uh, you get six, uh, in which case, um, well, in that case, that it all get thrown out, so it'd be zero. Um, you'd you'd want your total to be what you expect. So it's it's a good troubleshooting habit to get into, even if you don't want total for whatever calculations you're going to be doing. Include total just so you can do a quick error check of, yep, I expected seven um, inputs, and across my area, especially on a series analysis where you get that visual aspect, there's seven or four or however many files you're reading in. Um, for F bar, that's just your mean forecast. Um, so it's just a, a quick sample mean. And you you can find all of these variables, by the way, in the user's guide in MET. They're in the back. Um, they're also referenced in the uh, MET Plus, and I'll point you back to the, the MET user's guide as well if you need to see these variable names and what they are. Um, and then the FST dev is your forecast standard deviation. The reason why these two are requested, your mean forecast and your standard deviation for the forecast, is because ultimately um, in Genin's prod, um, a new feature was added to normalize um, an ensemble member relative to um, either the climatology or the ensemble itself. And um, if you um, are in climatology data, this is a great way to factor or to um, normalize the members across the ensemble relative to the ensemble member. Um, so I think um, the the current uh, scenario Hank is going over right now does a very good job of illustrating that you can read in an ensemble member across multiple days and get its climatology, that is, the F bar, the mean, and the standard deviation for that forecast ensemble member, and then read in that value or those files into Genin's prod and normalize the member based off of that member's mean and standard deviation. Um, and again, you'll need to do that if you're working in climatology data because that normalizes it. So, awesome. Thanks, John. And then, do you want to say just something? simple about the block size. So this is a new 4.1 feature. Yes. Um, so that in previous iterations, you had to have something one or greater. Um, and this block size was just an indication of how many uh, data points or uh, grid points it would analyze in one go. So if you put one, um, I think you would analyze one grid point at a time through series analysis, and it would run over your entire domain that you requested, either via mask or if you just put in full. Um, which could take a lot of time. It ultimately was to help you if you had a smaller computer size or a smaller memory size. So if you couldn't handle your entire um, uh, domain to analyze at once, um, this would uh, kind of cut it up into smaller pieces. I think the default is 1,024. Um, but a recent addition, a recent addition um, is that if you set it to less than one, um, so zero is kind of what we suggest, uh, it will, but you could put it to like negative 55. I think it would still do the same uh, method. It grabs instead the entire domain at once and analyzes it in one step, regardless of whatever size it is. 
So if you've decided to do over CONUS or if you decided to do over the full domain of your data, whatever that may be, um, zero will analyze it in one step instead of small black sizes. So if you're not worried about um, memory space, it's a great way to do your data very quickly. Great, thanks, John. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so you know our goal for this tutorial was to make things very simple, easy to easy to read. Um, straightforward. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> um, some of the data we 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 did have we, we we had a couple challenges just trying to work with uh, some of the big data project data that we that we had available. So this next part is somewhat complicated, um, but um, you can see that uh, the template that I have is very similar to the one that I did in step one. The problem with this, the one that I did just that quick one-off um, was that uh, it, it was grabbing, it only grabbed four files and I really wanted um, more than that. So what we did was we created this, um, so we're running, gonna run series analysis um, and we created four different sections um, which you can see down here, ensemble one, two, three, and four. Um, and um, what it does is it goes into each one of those monthly grid files, sorry, grid directories, um, and then grabs the seven um, monthly climatologies that we requested. And um, this was, there are a variety of ways to do this um, in consultation with um, our expert, George. He said that this is probably the most straightforward way to do it, and it does, and it was exactly that. So this is another technique if you have sort of complicated directory structure, um, you want to get different ensemble members that are in different files, you can see this as an example of going into different directories. So. I can go step by step, but it's probably better just to look at it. Um, we're renaming each um, each output something different so that we can refer to it later. Um, we've got our output base, which was in the system.comp file, so it's going to end up in the series analysis one directory in the output base. And let's give it oops, let's give it a whirl. Um, so you can see that it's given some output information. Um, it's running on one of the files and creating some output. You can go into this other window. So here's our output directory. Created it for us. We've got logs, we've got temp, and then we've got what we really want, which is the series analysis one. It looks like we've got one of the um, one of the series analysis files. We've got two of the series analysis files as it crunches through. Um, eh. All right. Well, there's a surprise. I would so. In setting up, here's, here's our doing our live demo. Um, in setting up this, I would have expected four output files. Um, so then we'll go in here and see what, yeah. So here's the mistake I made. So I've got mem1, I've got mem2, and then I have mem2 again, and then I have mem2 again. So. Just a way to check. Obviously, I didn't switch those output files, and each one of those overwrote. So there's one failure, but I did output some of the ones that um, we have. Let's go take a look at one of them. So we've got some. What John said. We've got total output, FBAR output, and standard deviation. Um, as well as the geographical extent lat longs, um, and that is great. So we've got the temperature observation variable. Um, so that we'll, we'll call that a partial success. <laughs> it wasn't exactly what I wanted, um, but it was pretty close. Um, so it, this is also a good way to do this. 
kind of test things step by step. Um, we now want to try to use Gen N's prod to also um, read this data. This is the part where I completely failed. Um, this was, again, sort of a, um, a, an ambitious way to do this. Um, and it didn't quite work out in the time I had, but I can show you how to set up the file. So again, what I did with this step three is basically just grab everything from step two. Um, you can see this process list at the very top um, where it's got the same four series analysis um, going. And then what I um, started doing was doing a gen ends prod. Um, when I get the gen ends prod working, so this file sort of assumes that the series analysis already ran and worked. When I get this working, it can all be one file and the process list can just add on, tack on to this, um, the gen ends prod and one comp file will run through finding the files, running series analysis, and then running gen ends prod. So you will see all of the series analysis stuff is the same as in step two. And then we get to this gen ends prod um, sort of variables. And I'm just going to, just because I, I will run this um, just so you can see what kind of errors it throws um, and what steps I need to take um, in order to get it working. But we can we can run through, um, I like the way um, John O'Pat set this up because he sort of added all of the gen ends prod variables um, that he could have used. Um, there are tons of them. So the only one that um, we've got right here that he's using is number of members, um, which is one through seven, because that's how many months we wanted to use. Um, but there are lots of gen ends prod. So he kind of just added them all so we could see what's available, uncommented the ones that we really wanted. Um, You've got some some thresh, you've got some thresholds and a variety of things. So when you start out creating things, sometimes it's easier just to add all these in the file, uncomment the ones you want, and then you can delete the rest once you have everything working. So there's a couple other that we're, we're running. This is the file name that we created from the um, series analysis. So it's gonna reference that. Here's the standard deviation, so still using that same file, um, etc. It's as you can you can see all of this all of the uh, gen ends broad variables for yourself. Um, but this is how this is kind of how um, I I go about building these um, somewhat. It can be very complicated Metplot scripts. Um, which is great because they're powerful. It means you don't have to do a lot of file manipulation on your own. Um, you don't have to do a lot of um, Python helper things. Um, you can really just, if, if you create these variables, um, you can jam it all into one file and it should roll. So let's just run this and make sure EC2 user, excellent. So this is, um, George always likes to put um, debug on so he can see exactly where things are failing. Um, you can see it had seven errors. Um, the other way to do it is to go into this output directory, go into logs, and you have um, all of the commands that you, um, all the met commands that you've created Obviously, these are all these have all been in um, previous tutorials. Um, repetition is always helpful, though. So you can take a look at this log and find out where it failed. So here's where it failed. I didn't refer to the ensemble files the correct way. Um, there's a better way to do this rather than trying to search the files. Um, which is look is to reference this both files um, 
final list that series analysis puts out. So anyway, this um, we've got we've only got four minutes left. Um, it's probably bad to um, end on a failure, um, but I think that was a pretty good um, start to finish launching an EC2 instance, um, grabbing some data. There's a ton of big data project data available to you, um, even right off when you um, create an instance, um, and it's it's very very easy to add more. Um, I want to give a a quick shout out to Ian McGinnis, who um, did a lot of the heavy lifting and figuring out how to mount the um, big data project to these EC2 instances and made it super simple for me. So thanks, Ian. Uh, so with that, I think I will just ask if there's any questions. Yeah, um, Jack put a couple of questions in chat that um, might be worth addressing. The first one is um, on the EC2 instance, uh, the net the netcdf files, are they viewable? Can they put be put into a shared bucket um, for others to mount um, so that you can you know collaborate with others? Is that um, yes? I mean, so obviously yes. So the so the netcdf files um, are viewable. We sh we showed that with oh yeah. I mean that so both. Um, both NetCDF and Grib are viewable from the big data project mounts. Um, you know, NC Dump or WGrip2. I think almost all of it is is Grip2 files, so WGrip2 should work. Um, you can copy those files to your own bucket. It will cost you some money for data storage. So right now, the NOAA project, you know, isn't charging to look at and use that data. If you copied it to your own shared bucket, you would then incur some costs. They're not huge, um, but just something to be aware of. Um, you know, honestly, if I were to do it, I would just figure out how to mount those, um, you know, data sets on your own and you can still collaborate. So yeah, go ahead, Jack. Yeah, I was just gonna uh, uh, sort of, Towards that, you, you, since you have a instance, do you have a bucket as part of that 30 gigabytes you get or no? No. So that 30 gigabytes is attached to the EC2 instance um, and not an actual shared bucket. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm just trying to get, build that bigger picture. I guess one of the other related questions was if I get in here and find the time to do it, this is great stuff. So thank you. Yeah, no worries. And I figure out something that I want to share with somebody else. Is there like a save AMI kind of thing to, to throw somewhere else or to save off and absolutely purchase, some purchase agreement? Absolutely. So, right. So here's my EC2 instance. Uh, um, yeah, that's good. All right. So this should be pretty quick. So here's my AWS tutorial. We did some stuff. We, we created some data. We have some configuration files that we wrote. We can go to actions, image and templates, and you can create your own image. So that AMI that you create in your own AWS space will have all of those comp files and data that you just created. So it really is easy as that. Sharing it can be a tiny bit more difficult, but it's, it's not bad to get around. So I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, and for that you would, be limited by what space you have or what you bought into, right? To export yep. that. Yep, and there's also some some fa fairly small costs associated with keeping an AMI around, but they are very small. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Um, and then space on GitHub to share the various comp files. So, you know, we have. Yeah, it's we don't have really a generic space to, to do that. Um, we put most of our use, almost all of our use cases in uh, publicly accessible GitHub repo, the Net Plus wrappers. Um, you know, and there's a variety of other things to do. So, are there any other questions? All right. Well. Um, I somehow hit it on the nose for 10 o'clock. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, and uh, again, if you have more questions, feel free to email. 
start GitHub discussions, um, whatever works for you, but uh, we're happy to answer them.